Hey there everybody, it's Mike Delisio, and today I'm going to be doing a solo review for Arc Nova from designer Matthias Viga and publisher Capstone Games. In Arc Nova, you are building your own zoo and trying to attract the kind of animals that are going to raise the appeal of the zoo, thereby getting points, getting people into your zoo, and trying to win the game that way. In the solo game, you are playing in a timed manner where you have a certain number of turns to try to get yourself to a positive score. I'm going to show you just how the solo game differs from the traditional game. We've already done a four square review of Arc Nova that has a full overview of the game. I will link that video in the description of this one. So if you don't know how to play the game at all, this isn't going to show you how to play the game. It's just going to show you how the solo game differs. So let's head over there. I'll show you that. Then we'll come back here and I'll let you know what I think. Okay, so this is not going to be a standard overview of Arc Nova. There has already been a video that shows you how to play it, and I'm going to link that video in the description of this one. I'm going with a bit of an assumption that you know how the game plays, and all I'm doing here is really talking about how the game changes as a solo game. There's not a whole lot. The first thing to keep note of is that this is the only component, this little board here, that is specific to the solo game. Everything else is going to be the standard components that you would have within the game. The way that the game works is that you're going to have a bit of a timer going on with tracking of your turns right here, and I'll show you in a moment how that works. The way you set the difficulty is they say that beginning players should set their appeal at 20. If you want to make it more challenging, you can set your appeal to 10. If you want to make it remarkably challenging, you can set your appeal at 0. The way that you win the game is at the end of the game, which is going to be triggered by this uh, tracker, I'll show you in a moment, if you have a positive score, then you've got, uh, you've won. If you've got, you know, plus, at least zero victory points is the way they put it, uh, at final scoring, then you'll have won the game. All right, so, one other thing to note is that in the solo game, certain cards are going to have some alternative kind of actions that trigger. So, if it has a blue stripe here at the bottom with that little icon, that means that this is specific to the solo game. So if you were to play the Indian Cobra, instead of the standard action, you would do this determination, which is after the current action, you'd perform an additional action. Here, the Boa Constrictor, it has the clever ability in the solo game. After the current action, you can place any action card on the one spot. Here, Sprint, you draw one card from the deck. So these are basically... Uh, making adjustments to cards that would be affecting other players in the game, and obviously you're not going to have other players in the solo game, so they have some uh, differences marked there at the bottom. There's also one final scoring card that does not work in the solo game, and so they tell you right here, do not use this final scoring card, draw another card. All right, so the game play is exactly the same as in standard Arc Nova. You're going to take your turns the same way you normally would. The main difference is that breaks don't happen in the standard way. Every time you take a turn, what you're going to do is take the topmost cube and move it over to the right. So this is essentially a, a timer. You take a turn, you slide a cube over. As you continue to take turns, sliding the cubes over to the right, you're eventually going to flip over or slide over that final cube that's going to show the break symbol there. And so what that's going to do is cause a break. And you're going to follow the little kind of adjusted chart down here. What's the first thing that you do is you take the cube from the topmost spot and you place it in the lowest available spot here on the association board. So in this case, it would go right here. Um, then you would do the, the regular kind of... Uh, uh, the kind of thing that you would do, which is discard down to five, remove tokens, uh, gaining your income, all of the things that you would do in a standard game of Arc Nova. Then you slide these back over, and you continue to go through the process. So as you can see, as the game continues, it's going to take fewer and fewer turns before you trigger a break. All right? And you keep doing this, eventually removing cubes, removing cubes, removing cubes, until you get down to the final, and that's going to trigger the end of the game. And as I said before, 
you only win the game if you've got at least zero victory points after the final scoring using this as your timer. All right, so it's six rounds um, to get to a positive victory point uh, level to be able to be successful at the game. There is also a special challenge, as they call it, uh, where you can play three solo games in a row. And if you're gonna play it that way, you don't shuffle the cards after uh, the end of each game. Instead, you take all the cards from that game out and set up the game with the remaining cards because there's so many cards in the game you can do this. Uh, you'll also remove the two zoo maps that you had to choose from as well as the bonus tiles because you randomly put out the bonus tiles. So you're basically changing up those uh, things. In the third game, you'll have to reuse some of those bonus tiles, all right? Um, at the end of each game, you record your score and then you could total all three of your scores at the end and then if you've had at least zero victory points, you've won. So just different ways to kind of keep things fresh and give yourself an extra challenge if you feel like you need one in the game. Of course, you can also play with the different maps that are gonna give you some challenges too. You can play with the standard map or you can play with some of the other maps that are gonna give you uh, a, a bit more challenge in the game as well. So that's really it. The game does not change on a fundamental level. The way that the brakes are triggered changes and uh, it's more of a timed game than it is in the standard game of Arc Nova. All right, let's head over and I'll let you know what I think about Arc Nova as a solo game. Okay, so that's the difference in the solo game of Arc Nova to the traditional game. You are still playing the same game with some slight differences in how the brake system works and uh, the amount of turns that you get are going to differ as well. So first thing I want to do is talk about some solo benchmarks. These are some high level ideas that I like to consider when I'm trying to assess whether I'm going to get a game off the shelf or not. The first is a win-loss condition. Is it a beat your high score variant? Are you trying to play against an AI opponent? And in the case of Arc Nova, it's kind of interesting. It's not really either of those. You're not necessarily trying to beat a high score. What you're trying to do is get to a positive victory point uh, level so that you've got your two markers going around two separate tracks. And basically, if they pass each other by the time you've played through your uh, number of turns, then you can consider that a victory. Now, if you wanted to kind of keep track of how you were doing, you can certainly do that. And then that would be closer to a high score variant. So it's somewhere in the middle there. The other thing I like to talk about is setup and teardown. And, you know, this is a big Euro game with a lot of components. So there's going to be a bit of setup with the game, but it's really not that bad, especially if you utilize either the um, component trays that come with the game or if you come up with your own kind of organizational system. There are definitely ways to get the setup and teardown of the, of the game uh, to a very reasonable uh, amount of time, especially for a game of this scope. So I don't find that a problem at all. The other thing I like to mention is rules, and in the case of Arc Nova, uh, the solo rules are on, I believe, the very back page, or if not, they're towards the back of the rule book. They are very clear. I didn't have any issues because there's really not a whole lot different in the solo game. I mean, you are essentially playing the traditional game of Arc Nova with a slight difference, as I mentioned, to the break system. You know, they do mention that normally when you, when you play a card for a break, you're going to get some money and you, you would still get the money in the solo game, but you're not going to move a break marker because there is no break marker there. Instead, you're using that solo board. So the rules were good. They were clear. I didn't feel like there were any ambiguities or confusion in the solo game. Uh, you know, and the regular rules for the game are quite good. So this just kind of keeps that standard up. All right, art and components. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because this was covered in the main Arc Nova review, which I was a part of in the Foursquare review, so you can get my thoughts on that there. I'll, however, I will say that the little component that comes with this for the solo game, the solo cardboard little thing is fine. It works just fine. You can use, I think, seven cubes from a, an unused player color. Works just fine, no problem there. And the small adjustments that are made to the cards work well, they're easy to see the little blue strip along the bottom. I think that was a good way to handle it. Um, so no issues at all there. And all of my um, comments for art and components for the game still apply here. All right, overall game impressions. Um, these are gonna be pretty much all positive if I can give you a little bit of foreshadowing towards what I think of this as a solo game. Um, one big thing that's a plus for me, and I want to make it clear that this is something that is a plus for me that may not be for you, so take that into account, is that the solo game feels much more like an efficiency puzzle than the multiplayer game of Arc Nova, and that's because 
you know, you are playing over a set number of turns. You know exactly how many turns you're going to get. That's not the case in multiplayer Arc Nova, where it's more of a player-driven end of the game. Uh, depending upon how people around the table play out, the game will have a, a variable number of turns. Not so in the solo game. And so because of that, you have a certain number of uh, turns, a certain amount of time to get done what you need to get done. For me, as a solo gamer, that works well. I love efficiency puzzles. Not everybody feels that way. So if you are not a fan of efficiency puzzles, keep that in mind that this variant may not work as well for you as it does for me. Another positive is that the gameplay is fast. One of the beefs that I have with multiplayer Arc Nova, especially at higher player counts, is that I feel it goes far too long. Uh, there's a significant amount, can be, a significant amount of downtime when you're playing in a four-player game of Arc Nova. That is not the case with the solo game. The solo game, you can easily play the game in 45 minutes to an hour, uh, especially if you've played the game a number of times. And so to me, that's a huge plus, is to be able to get the full experience, I feel, of Arc Nova in a significantly shorter period of time. That's one of the biggest beefs I have with the multiplayer game. That is gone here with the solo game. The other positive to me is that I don't find multiplayer Arc Nova a terribly interactive game. I've actually heard people describe it as multiplayer solitaire. Whether I agree with that or not, or whether you agree with that or not, uh, is another discussion. But it has been, uh, you know, mentioned that there is not as much interaction, and I do agree that it is not the most interactive game out there. So this really mechanically feels like the same game as the multiplayer game, and there are certain solo variants out there, especially for uh, particular uh, types of games, that the solo game, even if it's good, feels significantly different. They have to kind of really adjust mechanically what the game is doing to fit within the confines of a solo design space. Arc Nova is not th that way at all. I still feel like I am playing essentially the same game, slight adjustments with a fixed number of turns. It's also very easy to adjust the difficulty level in, in this game as a solo game. You know, you can start the beginner at 20 uh, appeal. You can go, you can knock that down to 10 if you want it more of a challenge. You can knock it down to zero if you really want to get a challenge. You can still use those different player boards to add to the, the difficulty and challenge there if you're finding uh, that you are really getting your, uh, your zoo to super impressive levels to add a little bit more challenge there. So. Overall, I like Arc Nova a lot as a game. I gave it an 8 in my original Four Squares review. I think that I like Arc Nova better as a solo game, and for that reason, I'm going to be giving it an 8.5 and a seal of excellence as a solo game. Uh, to me, if I'm going to play Arc Nova, and I, I'm sure I'm going to in the future, it is likely going to be either a solo game or a two, maybe three player game if I'm going to be playing it multiplayer. That, to me, is the best way to play the game that kind of mitigates some of that downtime and, and length that, that I can find somewhat problematic. So there you have it. That is Arc Nova as a solo game. This is Mike Delicio signing off from Dice Tower Headquarters.